hope you're having a great day. My name is Luke the Kook, and this is WASD Radio Network, broadcasting from the Radio Tower of Power. Thank you for choosing to watch this video. With the onslaught of negativity born from recent Last of Us 2 reviews, I've decided to pick a completely different and more positive topic for a much-needed and overdue discussion video that has taken me long enough to get around to doing. I don't want to just be a Let's Play channel after all. It is best to just sit down and have a discussion once in a while. The topic of this discussion is what I'm looking forward to the most with Ghost of Tsushima. If you found this video with probably just over a single digit view count, then you already know what Ghost of Tsushima is. You're either really excited about it, like I am, or looking for a different perspective. Tell you what, you're not going to find a similar perspective to Michael Does Life with my video, and please don't attack that guy for his opinion. Isn't he also just doing a character anyway? Anywho, the first thing I notice about Ghost of Tsushima is that it looks like it could have been directed by Akira Kurosawa. Not literally, but definitely inspired by the work of that director. The way the whole world looks and feels alive in constant motion is music to the eyes. Kurosawa had a way of always keeping his shots busy with movement, a certain flow which always added to the immersion and had this magical effect of drawing you into the world. The movement also always served as a guide for the viewer's gaze as a well-framed shot is typically done in a way to guide the focus of the eye to the main subject of the scene. Ghost of Tsushima perfectly practices this with its camera placement behind our protagonist Jin, not only keeping you focused on the main subject, but also while feeling like a genuine part in this world that you're really just watching on your TV. If Akira Kurosawa teamed up with the same studio that brought you Bushido Blade and wanted to create an open world adventure, it would be this game. Speaking of Bushido Blade, from what I hear and understand, the combat is very similar in Ghost of Tsushima. At least, if you want to take on your opponents honorably, in the way of the samurai. And you can even do a little bow over the corpse of your opponent. Doing a little taunt after taking down enemies was always something I loved doing in Saints Row as well. You may not remember Bushido Blade much, but you were also able to select different stances that would affect your attacks. Equipping a different weapon also changed your moveset as well, especially if you wanted to launch into a combo attack. The lack of health bars indicate that a fight could end in a couple of blows or less, much like in the PlayStation 1 Classic. The type of armor you wear could depend on how quickly you get slain, but we'll touch back on that topic in a little bit. If you're finding the face-to-face -face combat to be a little intimidating, then you can take the Tenshu route by becoming the Ghost and use the Dark on your side to stealth kill your enemies. Another recent Samurai-inspired game touched upon that, if you remember Sekiro at all. Wasn't that game of the year just last year? I'd say it was a pretty worthy title of that placement. Stealth can be just as challenging, though, if not more challenging than face-to-face -face combat. Not only do you have to make sure your main target doesn't see you, but you also have to protect your six and make sure no one off-screen sees you as you're sneaking up on your target. That always happened to me in Tenchu anyway, especially in the original, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. Unlike Tenchu, however, or at least any Tenchu game I've ever played, is that Jin is able to be smart and use a bow and arrow from a distance. Stealth kills from a distance is always preferable, just like it was in Skyrim when I was trying to level up beyond that single digit number. Oh, and you can use fireworks to divert enemy attention. Sure, it's not as hilarious as using a cat, but where are fireworks in your mushroom zombie game? Eh? Eh? After you earn enough of a reputation, then your enemies cower away and don't know what to do and become helpless when the ghost arrives. This is about as dishonorable as it gets, killing unarmed opponents that are trying to retreat. But you have a land to protect. If your enemy is willing to fight dishonorably, and you keep allowing that, well, then they're gonna win. Now we can get back to the customization. Like I said earlier, customization doesn't only change the look of your character, but also the effectiveness of Jin. 
Dark Souls and Skyrim were great for allowing me to find cool and rare armor to deck out the look of my character and enhance certain abilities. That type of customization is nothing new in games, but Ghost of Tsushima isn't going to be rich in fantasy and supernatural like in the examples I used. It will be interesting to see how different your character will feel if Sucker Punch is really going for more of a historically accurate and down-to-earth game. It might not be uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance so much, but the difficulty spike will certainly feel similar, I'm sure. But if photo mode alone doesn't sell the game, then I would be shocked. So expect to see your Instagram feed fill up with Ghost of Tsushima come this July. So, if you're upset or disappointed by the performance of Last of Us Part 2, then at this point, the only way we can combat that is by supporting good games that actually care about its audience. I see Ghost of Tsushima as one of those games, but there's also another little title that may not be very well known coming out soon this year, titled Cyberpunk 2077, that I would also like to get around to talking about. Also, you can still pick up Doom Eternal New, and I'm getting around to streaming that on Twitch soon. You won't want to miss out on that hilarity. My name is Luke the Kook, and this is WASD Radio Network Broadcasting from the Radio Tower of Power. Peace out.